This is Algebraic Expressions Part 2, and today we're going to talk about the distributive property. The distributive property lets you multiply a sum by multiplying each addend separately and adding the products. Works for differences too. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So in an algebraic expression, we may come across a problem like this, four times the quantity x plus three. And according to our order of operations, we're supposed to do what's in parentheses first. But if we don't know the value of x, it seems like we're stuck and there's nothing that we can do. But we can use the distributive property to actually get rid of those parentheses. So what this problem here really means is they want four of these x plus threes. So I can think about it differently and write x plus three, x plus three, x plus three, x plus three, a total of four times. And if I look back at this long problem, I've got four x's and all the threes add up to a total of 12. But another shorter way that we can do that same exact problem is use our distributive property. So back to our original expression here, four times the quantity x plus three, when I'm using the distributive property, I'm taking this number outside, this multiplier, that I'm supposed to be multiplying my parentheses by, and I'm going to take this guy and multiply him by each add end separately. So first I'm gonna multiply four times x, my first number in parentheses and that gives me a product of 4x. Then I'm gonna multiply four times three, the second number in my parentheses, and I get a product of 12. And I'm gonna add those. So 4x plus 12 is a simplified answer for four times the quantity of x plus three. So let's take a look at some examples. So here's a problem we might see, an expression we may see, three plus b, that quantity, times five. So the five appears at the end of the parentheses, but it makes no difference. I'm gonna multiply him in, I'm gonna distribute him. So five times my first number in parentheses gives me 15, plus five times my second number in there, which is b, variable b, is 5b. So a simplified version for this expression is 15 plus 5b. Here's one where my number is in front of the parentheses. So I'm distributing the seven. Seven times w gives me seven w. This one is a difference, so I'm actually gonna subtract them. And seven times my second number here is 35. So seven w minus 35 is a simplified version of seven times the quantity w minus five. Here I'm distributing my negative eight. So negative eight times my first variable is negative eight a, plus this one is a sum, negative eight times b would give me negative eight b. Well, we're being asked to simplify these expressions, and in algebra, when we say simplify, we literally want our final answer to be as simple as possible. So here I see I've got two symbols in a row together. I can simplify these. Plus a negative is the same as subtracting. So I'm gonna write one sign here and make this negative 8a minus 8b. This is my most simplified version of this problem. This would be a good time to pause the video, try these three problems on your own, and when you're ready, unpause the video and we'll go over them together. All right, let's solve these. So first here I'm gonna distribute my negative six. So negative six times my first number here, x, is going to be negative six x. Minus, because this one is a difference, Negative six times five gives me negative 30. So I've simplified it, but not completely. I can take these two minus and a sub, uh, subtract and a negative sign here, and I can combine them to an addition. So negative six x plus 30 would be my most simplified version of negative six times the quantity x minus five. This time I've got an x, my multiplier is here at the end of the parentheses, but I'm still going to do the same process. I'm gonna multiply by the first number in my parentheses. Negative four times x would be negative four x. Plus, because this is an addition problem, y times x would just be y x. This is my most simplified version here. One more. This time it just looks like, my, like I'm distributing a negative, but I can always 
stick my one in there. I call it a ghost one. So it's never a zero that I want to put in when I'm missing a number. It's a one. So negative one times negative three X would just be positive three X plus negative one times two J would be negative two J. So here is one where we can do a little bit more of that simplifying. That plus minus can just be written as a minus. So the most simplified version of this problem would be 3x minus 2j. We can also use the distributive property when it comes to geometry problems. So if we're trying to find the area of these rectangles, but we don't know all the values for the lengths and widths, we can still simplify our answer. So when finding area of a rectangle, we're gonna do base times height or length times width. So in this case, the width of this rectangle is four. Multiplied by the length, which is C plus three. So to simplify this, I can use my distributive property. 4 times c would give me 4c, and 4 times 3 gives me 12. And since every time we find an area, we're finding our area in units squared, like centimeters squared, inches squared, anything like that, I'm going to take this quantity and give it a label of units squared. Units is kind of the generic term for they didn't tell me if they were measuring in inches or centimeters or miles. So I'll just say units. All right, let's try this one. So our width is A and our length is B minus 6. So to simplify, I'm multiplying in my A. So I have AB minus 6A. And once again, it's an area. So I'm going to say units squared for my label. 